Spun out our IE venture to Brussels and Strasbourg to find out more about the European Parliament, what it does and how it works. We talked to MEPs, NGOs and European Parliament staff about their thoughts and views on a range of different topics. In this video, we asked them what it's like to work for the European Parliament and how they got started. I'm Owen Ballon. I work for Transport and Environment. We're a green NGO working for sustainable transport here in Brussels. I'm Andrew Murphy. I also work here at Transport and Environment. I focus on the policy areas of international transport and shipping. I was working in Dublin and I had a job in Dublin and it was going quite well. This was back in 2012. Um, but I had applied to do an internship at the European Commission and I was offered a place, so I decided to, set, to accept it, not because I was unhappy with Dublin, just because I wanted to try something new. And I'd always have been interested in EU affairs because I studied uh, European law in university and found that really interesting. So I decided to come to Brussels and did one internship. And as often the way in Brussels, uh, you, do, you do a second internship before you might get a, a permanent or a, a actual job. So I did a second internship, and then this, this position came available in transport and environment. Uh, as a communications officer, and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go for that. I'm David Garrahy. I work as Head of Policy and Advocacy in the European Youth Forum. I was always hugely engaged and uh, excited about the potential of, uh, of youth to, to make a change uh, and, uh, and influence on, positively on, on politics and, uh, and the future of society and the future, uh, future of the world, ultimately. Then I studied uh, European studies, I think very much based on that, on that interest and that experience. Um, I, and I came out to work in, uh, in um, ad, you know, advocacy and political communications. And I'm here, still here seven years later. I joined the Youth Forum um, three years ago to work on youth political participation. And now I head the, the, the full advocacy and policy program of the Youth Forum. My name is Linda and uh, I'm a press secretary of Cecilia Wikström, a Swedish MEP in the Liberal Group. I was working in Sweden for four years as a journalist before and I found Sweden a bit small. I had already been at the top stations and I wanted to, to see something more so that's why I, I moved to Brussels and here. I like it a lot here, it's very international and um, I have colleagues from 28 member states that are lobbyists from even more member states uh, or even outside of Europe. And uh, it's very easy to get friends here and I just like it. Everybody here is um, heterogen than homogen, if you understand what I mean. In yeah. Sweden, everybody has more or less the same background. It's quite, it's nice. You, get, you know what you get, but it's a bit boring here. Everybody fits in because it's so much diversity. My first uh, role in Brussels um, was back in 2010, so I'm here five years now. I had finished up in university with my uh, studies and I was looking for uh, my first employment opportunity that would be take me out of the country a little bit. So I applied for the European Commission stage and ended up working in the um, unit responsible for transport policy in the EU and I was there for six months. I hadn't intended to stay here five years when I first moved over here. But uh, once, I got, once I moved here and once I saw some of the employment opportunities and, and what the quality of life was like here, one job led to another. Um, so after the commission, I started working for the Green Group in the European Parliament. And after three years there, I, I took up this job at Transport and, and Environment, where I get to work in quite a specialised field, um, emissions from international aviation and shipping. Surprisingly, I don't have an engineering background in either of these, but as often the case in Brussels, it's more a case of being able to kind of get a grasp of a policy area and become a good um, advocate and, and spokesperson for what your organisation is trying to achieve in that area. I did Erasmus, which is the student exchange programme when I was studying in NUI Galway. I studied in Granada in Spain for a year. Uh, I fell in love with the European project and uh, I did a master's in Sweden afterwards and like everyone else who's uh, in Brussels, uh, I only came for five months to do the so-called stage or internship and uh, I'm here now for almost eight years. So hopefully haven't gone native yet. My name is Olivia Teen and I am a third year law and French student in UCC in Cork City and I am doing my Erasmus here in, um, in Strasbourg. The Erasmus program for UCC anyway um, basically involves going to France for the year and um, you have a choice of a couple of different cities and you're studying the law course through French. The parliament being here was kind of a big thing for me, I just thought like it'd be something so different and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do after university yet but I think 
being here is kind of a good, it's a good atmosphere to be in. It's good like to see how the parliament works. And either way, Strasbourg is gorgeous, really, really nice. And it's, a, it's such a student city as well. So that definitely attracted me too. My name is Francis Fitzgibbon and I'm working uh, with Fine Gael and with Deirdre Clune here in the European Parliament. And I've been working here uh, for the past year and about three months. One of the most extraordinary things that I've come across is that people are young people, and I'm not so young anymore, but, but they're speaking five and six European languages. We need to, to encourage people to be speaking more language at a, at a, at a more professional uh, fluency uh, so that they can go and they can work in a number of, of, of EU countries. I mean, when you look at the average uh, Belgian uh, person where I live, uh, they're speaking three languages. Brussels alone has, uh, most young people have a proficiency in Dutch and in French, or in Flemish and in French. Uh, the, the majority would then speak German as well. Whereas if you go to Ireland, you, you'll struggle, I think, to find one other language apart from English. And when you speak English, it's, there's a tendency to get lazy because anywhere you go in Europe, by and large, they'll, they'll speak English. Um, but, but, but certainly it's something we need uh, to work on. And it's something we need to, to fix. Well, I think one advantage that native English speakers have is that uh, English is now the working language, the de facto working language of the EU. So uh, to be a native English speaker is a prized asset. And I think it does see a lot of Irish people going to jobs connected with, with communications. In the future, that's one thing for me. Like, I'd love to be able to work abroad. Um, so working on my languages is definitely something that I want to keep up. I was doing German as well in school, so if I can, I'd like to try and improve that. I just think I have so many more options with it. Do you know, and it's something different as well. Even job-wise, it's something different. Like, we're not pushing Ireland, and I've realised that since I came to Strasbourg. All of them have a couple of languages, all the students. And I think in Ireland, we're just so lucky that we all speak English, that like we're not pushed to kind of learn the other European languages or any other languages. So, so yeah, the unemployment rate is, of course, a very big uh, challenge at the moment. It's Sweden too that we need to cope with. But I think that with the, the EU, it might be easier because there are so many opportunities. You can go to Ireland, for example, or somewhere else for three months yeah. and uh, without getting any visa or, or, or anything. So... Uh, I think there are a lot of opportunities and as a young person, you're not bound by a family normally or so on, so you can just take your chances and go.